Dusty Rose, Terry Funk, Ted DiBiase, Dory Funk Jr., T- Tully Blanchard, Stan Hansen, Bruiser Brody, Manny Fernandez, Boggy, uh, Doddy, Bobby Duncan, and yourself. How did you all end up in the same college, and why was it such a wrestling hotbed of talent? I don't know, and, and, and uh, I don't know if you uh, n- uh, knew that uh, Barry Wyndham was also uh, uh, at West Texas State for a couple of years. I completely forgot to write him down. Yeah. He, he uh, as a matter of fact, we're we're uh, uh, made the appearance here. We're making the appearance here today. To, uh, he's uh, he, he was. I got to see him yesterday, and it was uh, really nice to see him. Uh, I was playing football at West Texas State, and and uh, you know that's how I met. Uh, you know, me and Tully Blanchard were together, and the Million Dollar Man Ted DiBiase in the same team, and uh, they they were. I mean, so many really really good uh, wrestlers that came out of. Uh, one area, you know, it's, uh, I just saw Stan Hansen uh, a couple of weeks ago. We had a, a, an appearance and, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're all starting to get up there in age, you know, it's kind of sad. I, I understand Terry Funk is, uh, not doing that well, you know, physically. So we're, we're, we're getting up in age. Well, I was just looking actually, I mean, for the most part, everyone's still going as well. So out of that group, but, um, Tully Blanchard in particular, uh, I believe that he recruited you. Was he trying to recruit everybody on the uh, football team, or what did he see in you that you thought you'd be a good wrestler? Uh, I no, he wasn't. <clears throat> he, he never really uh, talked about wrestling. Uh, he just came up to me one time, and uh, uh, I think we were having a beer, and uh, he says. Because his father was a promoter in San Antonio, and uh, he says, my dad thinks uh, that you could have a, a big career in professional wrestling. You know, at the time, I, I didn't even acknowledge it. I wasn't, I wasn't interested. I wasn't a, a, a wrestling fan. I never watched wrestling. I, I, I didn't know any, anything about wrestling. So uh, uh, finally, my senior year, his father, uh, Joe Blanchard, made a trip with us, and he sat next to me on the plane, and uh, he starts telling me that uh, I could be making $80,000 a year. You know, he says, uh, he says, you could have a very good career. He said, you could be making $80,000 a year. And uh, th- this was in 1975, and I, I, I said, uh, God, $80,000. I signed with the Kansas City Chiefs, uh, I think for eighteen thousand dollars a year to play uh, football, and I found out how tough you know that that was to, to make a living, and I, I started thinking eighty thousand dollars, <laughs> you know. So when I got cut from the Kansas City Chiefs, I, I went to uh, to Canada and played for the BC Lions. I came back and I told Tully, I said, Tully, I want to play one more year uh, because I was making uh, when I went to the BC Lions, I signed for twenty thousand and. Then, the next year, twenty-two thousand, and uh, like a two thousand in- increments, and I, and I kept thinking uh, eighty thousand, and I, I I I didn't understand wrestling. I didn't understand the business. In, in football, you would sign a contract, and that's how you would get paid. I I thought that I was going to negotiate with the with somebody for a, for a contract, and uh, little did I know that. Uh, uh, so I told Tully, I said, I want to play one more year with the, with the BC Lions and come back and I want to start training because he had uh, he was going to graduate and we started together. But when I first started training and, 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 and uh, there was no money coming in and I was training, you know, for weeks and, and nothing coming in. And then I started making shows and some of the shows I uh, uh, make less money, you know, than, than what I spent. I said, what happened to the $80,000? <laughs> so uh, uh, I was in Florida. And, uh, Terry Funk was the world champion, and he came into Tampa. And he called me into the locker room, and he says, how are you liking it, my boy? And I said, well, I'm liking it. I said, but uh, the money is just not there. I, you know, I was having to pay for my own apartment and, and stuff in, in Tampa. And I said, I think what I'm going to do, I said, <clears throat> I'm going to uh, – in February, I'm going to stop training and and uh, just go home and start getting ready for my football season. And he said, well, don't do anything. Let me talk to Eddie Graham. And 
he started, he went and uh, talked to Eddie Graham and like the following day, they called me into the office and they started making, uh, you know, giving me some bookings, right? You know, I could uh, survive. And then before you know it, I, I'm booked in, in, uh, in Atlanta, Georgia. They, they changed my name from Merced Solis to Richard Blood, which was Ricky Steamboat's mm -hmm. uh, real name. And uh, I was on my way after that. I, I uh, just did a bit of Googling. So I think $80,000 in 1975 is the equivalent of around $450,000 today. So they were spinning you some pretty big numbers back then. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, a, a, a teachers were in Texas. The, the annual salary for a teacher in Texas was uh, $6,600. So $1,800 is pretty good. Mm. Uh, well, 80,000, 80, yeah. I'm trying to think, what's that in? I mean, 18,000. 18,000 yeah. was pretty good, yeah.